In this video, we're going to have a look at graphing functions, and this video is going to be concerned with uh, what it is that affects the length of a function's period. Now, you'll remember that the period of a function is just the non-repeating part of it. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to have a look at what effect changing the the number or introducing a number before x has on the function okay so if you think of functions in the form of y equals a sine nx plus b or a cos nx plus b we're going to have a look at what effect changing n has on the function okay now you know what y equals sine x looks like you know that it has a maximum value when x is 90 so you know that it's an angle of 90 which generates a value of 1 and you also know that it's an angle of 270 that generates a value of negative 1. Now, for this function here, y equals sine 2x, remembering that it's this is the angle, and remembering that an angle of 90 is what gives you a value of 1, we know that 2 times 45 gives us 90. So when x is 45, we know that this function is going to take a value of 1, because sine of 90 is 1. So this function has to have a a value of 1 when x is 45. Now similarly when uh, we have an angle of 270 we have sine of 270 being equal to negative 1 well what do we need? We need the x to be 135. So what you're talking about having is an angle which has a value of or a function which takes a value of 1 when x is 45 and a function which takes a value of negative 1 when x is 1, 3, 5. So what happens in effect is that your cycle is much reduced. So you end up with something that looks like that. Okay, now let's look at it properly. <clears throat> now, what we end up with with y equals sine 2x is the sine wave but with a much shorter cycle. So instead of having a cycle of uh, 360 like we had, we now find that our period length is 180. And we end up with two sine waves, if you like, within 360 degrees. Okay? Now, there you have y equals cos x. Now, what about the function y equals cos 3x? What's going to happen there? When we had sine 2x, we had two sine waves within 360. With cos 3x, You've guessed it. We're going to have three cos waves, or three cosine cycles within 360. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Okay, so that's the graph of y equals cos 3x. The amplitude doesn't change, but the length of the cycle does. Okay, so to summarize, when you think of functions in the form of a sine nx plus b, or a cos nx plus b, n is the number of waves and the number of cycles in 360. Okay, so we saw that in the previous one. 3x, so 3 cycles. 2x, so 2 cycles. Okay, now, the period, if we go back to this one, the period here is going to be 120. No longer 360, but 120. So, what can we say? We can say that the period is just going to be 360, divided by whatever n is. So because n was 3 in the previous example, our period is going to be 120. Okay, a third of what it was before. Right then, so let's have a look at a few examples and you guys can maybe uh, have a, a we think about these yourselves by pressing pause and trying to work it out yourself. Okay, so here's the first one. Now the first thing you've got to do is identify the non-repeating part of the function. And that makes it quite easy then to determine whether or not it's a sine wave or a cosine wave that you're maybe going to build your, your uh, formula around. Now, what have we got? We've got three sine waves within 360. So that's just y equals sine 3x. And that's you. Simple as that. Okay? How about this one? What about the non-repeating part of the function? Well, you've got 1, 2, 3, 
4 cosine troughs, if you like, within 360. So it's just a case of saying it's y equals cos 4x. And if you were asked to state the period, the period is going to be 360 divided by 4, so that's just 90. Each one of these cycles is 90 degrees long. Okay? How about this one? Let's again try and identify the non-repeating part of the graph. There's 1, 2, 3, and 4 of these in 360 degrees. So what can we say? Well, what does that look like? Well, that's an upside down cosine cycle. So we'll say that it's y equals negative cos. But how many do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's negative cos of 4x. And that's you. Done. How about this one? Let's have a look again at the non-repeating part. There you have 1. There you have 2. What are we talking about? Well, you can see that it's an upside down sine wave. So it's y equals negative sine. How many cycles within 360? 2. So it's y equals negative sine 2x. And finally, what's here? Well, there is no repeat. There's no repeat, but what you do have within 360, if you can see it, is you've got half a cosine cycle, half a cosine uh, uh, full cycle. Now, it's not been flipped upside down or anything. It's just half a cosine cycle. So we say this is y equals cos. How many cycles do we see? We see half a cycle. So it's y equals cos a half of x. And to see the full cycle, you would have to continue to uh, 720 degrees. Because what you've got here is just a snapshot, and that restricts your view to a section between 0 and 360 degrees. Okay, so I hope that was helpful, and I hope you can see that whatever number comes before x in your trig equation is what tells you how many cycles you have in 360 degrees. Okay, and you can work out the period of your function by taking that number, or by dividing 360 by that number. Okay, so I hope that was helpful.